We have a new MotoGP world champion, and it is Peko Bagnaia. His comeback from 91 points will go down as the greatest comeback in MotoGP history. Congratulations to Ducati, and of course to Peko. What a race that was. It was a race that was so built up with tension. And we have capped off the Suzuki story with Alex Rins winning for Suzuki in their final race. It's such a sad way. It's bittersweet really when you think about it for Suzuki to win the race. Knowing that those bikes are so good, but they're not going to be on the grid next season. We'll get onto that in a bit. But let's talk about the world champion. It was a very nervy start to the race. There was contact early on with him and Fabio Quattararo. I mean, it was so close to being an incident. Uh, Quattararo, or Bagna, I believe, lost his wing on the side of the bike. And yeah, he didn't look comfortable. Let's say that. He was qualified eighth and he was around there. He finished the race in ninth place. He didn't want to take any risks at all. Quattararo had to do all the risk taking. He made a good start and tried to get into the lead impact with Rins, Jorge Martin, Jack Miller and Mark Marquez. He just couldn't catch. Uh, Mark Marquez crashed out. That allowed Quattararo to gain a place into fourth and try and catch the group. But he just didn't have enough. There was the flying Brad Bender who came through and was just sensational in the KTM. Finished in second place. And yeah, Jorge Martin joined him on the podium. But this video is dedicated to Paco Bagna and what a turnaround it's been. You know, we were sat here at the Saxon Ring after he crashed out saying that his title uh, chances were effectively done. He was 91 points behind and it is the greatest comeback in MotoGP history. Statistically it proves that. It's probably the greatest in motorsport history in terms of what's happened over a season. Yeah, Ducati have their first world champion since 2007 with Casey Stoner. And the first Italian to win a world title MotoGP since Valentino Rossi in 2009. It's great for them and I'm excited to see what we're going to get next year already. But what we're not going to get next year is those beautiful Suzukis on the grid. What a shame that they aren't going to be racing in MotoGP. You think of what Alex Rins and Joan Mayer have achieved with that brand since they came back. All the way back to Maverick Vinales and Lisa Spagaro, you know, Maverick winning the first race for them at Silverstone and then the journey they've been on, winning the world title in 2020 with Joan Mir, for them to not be racing, it just doesn't seem right. The bike is so good, it's won in Australia with Rins, it wins in Valencia again. It was almost like a fairy tale story, I don't really like saying fairy tale because they're not going to be here next year and yeah, they should be on the grid. Shame on those in the Suzuki board that decided to pull the team out of MotoGP. They will regret that decision. I know plenty of fans around the world will be gutted not to see the blue bikes on the grid next year. But what a way for Rins to give them the present to the team that is at the circuit. You know, that's a way to end a partnership. Perfect for Rins at Suzuki. But on to Paco Bagna finally. Him and Fabio Quattararo have cheered us to a fantastic season and yeah, respect at the end between the two. We go on now to Tuesday for testing. We move to 2023 already, but well done to Paco Bagna and Ducati. They do deserve it. They have been the dominant force, especially in the second and half of this MotoGP season. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of today's race. Love to hear them. Make sure to subscribe to Crash Mode GP for more content and I will see you next time.